Washington Pod presents Earl Nightingale. Losing a job is often the best thing that can happen to a person. Lacking the energy, imagination, or incentive to look farther afield for bigger and better opportunities when employed, being suddenly unemployed often does the job for us. After the initial shock and period of depression, we often find ourselves in work much more to our liking and with far more opportunity for advancement than ever afforded by the old job. Surveys of men and women of singular success have shown that their success hinged directly on the jobs they had left behind. Whether they'd quit voluntarily or been fired made no difference. Practically all of the top people in our corporation were formerly employed by other companies. That they are delighted with their present work proves my point. They're in work far more interesting and earning more in the way of rewards than ever before in their lives. There's an excellent theory in business that we should not concentrate our thinking on the things that are going badly or in need of change, but rather on those things that are going best and producing the most revenue. That's where our thinking can have the greatest return. In other words, don't wait until a crisis to think about something. Instead, find ways of improving and upgrading it while it's humming along at its best. And the same kind of thinking works best with us. Don't wait until you've lost a job to start thinking about possible alternatives. Think about them when all is going well and you're under no pressure nor suffering from a loss of self-esteem. So you get out your faithful yellow legal pad and at the top of the page you write, I need better, more interesting, more rewarding work. Under that you might first ask the question, is it to be found with my present company? What can I do for my present company that will make a more important contribution than the work I'm presently doing? Another question might go, if I had my druthers, what would I rather do for a living than anything else in the world? And here we can make a list to later number in the proper order of importance. After each idea, we might ask, am I now prepared to handle such work? And what will it take to prepare me for such work? Another question might go, what do I know how to do that will best serve the people of this community or this state or this country or the whole world? Followed by another list. As we doodle with such ideas, more ideas will come to us. Each new idea spawns new ideas in turn as a fish spawns eggs, and each of the eggs spawns further ideas. Now we're thinking. Now we're using the equipment we were born to use and putting to work our most valuable possession. Never think in this way without a pen and paper, preferably that yellow pad. Write page after page if you can, as long as the ideas pour out. For some, the ideas will come as a spring torrent. For others, they'll come very slowly and painfully as the process of thinking is explored. But as you force yourself to continue, and thinking, remember, is hard work, as you force yourself to continue, you'll find the ideas coming easier and better. Don't stop when you get your first exciting idea. Write it down by all means, underscore it. Draw a star beside it or a circle around it. Then press on for new and better ideas, and you'll find them coming. Work on this in your spare time. Early in the morning is best for me, for days and weeks, until you've worked out at the very least plan A. Then try for plan B. Talk the ideas over with your wife or husband and get his or her thinking as well. Soon you'll find yourselves laughing, delighted as children with your newfound adventures and exciting options.